Welcome back. Today, I'm continuing the process to convert my 1981 DeLorean to an electric vehicle. On today's episode, we're going to be completely ripping apart the interior of our donor vehicle, this 2019 Chevy Bolt. We're going to take it from this to this. To catch you up quickly, we're taking the entire drivetrain out of the Bolt, the electric motor, the inverter, the batteries, the electronics, everything, and swapping them into the DeLorean. This is Project Lightning. I'm starting off on the right side of the instrument panel assembly, removing some of the smaller panels on the side and the A-pillar trim. Just like in the previous episode, where I remove all of the components under the hood, I will not be following any straightforward procedure to strip the interior. If I see a panel, I'll remove it. If I see a bolt, I'll remove it. And if I see a connector, I'll disconnect it. Absolutely everything is getting stripped from the interior. Cutting ahead from my camera running out of batteries, I've removed the trim piece that covers the instrument panel and removed a couple of screws to remove the screen. The interior is held together with lots of plastic clips and screws that require a 7mm socket. On the driver's side, I'm now removing some of the trim pieces and the interior fuse panel cover. There is a small panel here that controls the headlights, and it came out easily. I will definitely try to use this in the DeLorean. The way they currently work to control the lights in the DeLorean are with a single big push button that you press in multiple times to cycle through off, low, and high beams, and it's very easy to accidentally leave the lights on. Then, back to the passenger side to get some more trim panels and the glove box. A handful of clips hold in this trim piece that sits in front of the gauge cluster screen. It also contains manually adjustable air vents. I'm starting to have trouble accessing things, so it's time to remove the passenger seat. Like in most vehicles, this one is held in with four large bolts, and there is a single large electrical connector under the seat. The center console comes out easily with just a few screws on either side. Also, just like in the previous episode, I make good use of the label maker. Every wiring connector gets labeled, so I know where things go when I try to reassemble everything in the DeLorean. The electrical design of the Bolt is... strange. I'm sure there must be a good reason for it, but electrical modules are hidden all over the car. The module that controls the pedestrian noise speaker is under the center console, for example. They seem to be located without rhyme or reason, which makes labeling everything very important. I'm now moving on to the front center console, which hides another array of unrelated modules behind it. It also hides a plastic vent that allows air from the climate control to reach the passengers in the back seat. The steering wheel was getting in my way, so I moved on to try to remove it without much luck. I did disconnect a bunch of wires from it though. The instrument panel assembly is starting to become loose now, so I start over on the passenger side trying to remove screws and connectors as I go to remove it.
time for a little cleanup. I don't pay much attention to where screws and clips go since I won't be using them, but I do pick them all up and put them in Ziploc bags as they pile up. This ensures that I have plenty of extra hardware for other projects. I decide now is a good time to remove the carpet. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is how much broken glass there is all over the car. The glass in the rear left door and hatch were both shattered in the collision, and being safety glass, it turns into small cubes that make their way everywhere. Every cup holder, door panel, the glove box, I even found glass inside the front vents. With the carpet out of the way, I finally have good access to the modules all along the floor. I can also remove that air vent I mentioned earlier. I'm working on removing the main wiring harness in the interior. It's shaped like an H with trunks that run front and back along the door sill and then bridge together under the front seats. There is also another wiring harness for everything in the instrument panel that spans the width of the car. Most of the harness is wrapped in plastic loom and electrical tape, except for the parts that go under the door sill trim. The harness is clipped to the body about every six inches. It seems that almost every connector used on the harness is unique or keyed to prevent you from plugging one thing into another. On certain things like the body control module that have a lot of connectors, each one is color-coded to the port so you know where they go. The interior fuse panel is located near the left knee of the driver, and the body control module is directly behind it. This means that there are a ton of wires in this location that all need to be unclipped and disconnected. Each connector and module is then labeled as best I can, then moved aside so I can continue with disassembly. I'm finally starting to make progress on the instrument panel harness. It is disconnected from the driver's side, and I'm starting to move it over to the middle of the car. This harness connects the steering wheel and all of its buttons, the brake and accelerator pedals, the instrument cluster and main screen, climate control buttons and the climate control unit, and bridges the roof harness. At the rear of the vehicle, most of the harness has already been exposed in my older videos. There is a harness that runs up the left side of the vehicle and controls all of the taillights. This harness is already disconnected and labeled, so it was easy to pull back inside the passenger compartment. There is also a harness that runs in a Y shape from the front A pillars along the roof to the hatch. The headliner was already damaged in the accident, so I don't have to be careful in removing it, but there are a lot of lights and handles and things attached through it that have to be removed first. Something that I was surprised to see is that the roof harness was hot glued to the headliner, which meant that I had to remove both at the same time. With the headliner removed, I have access to the curtain airbags. My first attempt at removing it was not successful, so back to the wiring harness. I've got it entirely disconnected from the back now, and with everything removed from the engine bay, I can push the harness through the firewall into the interior of the car. I know that the interior harness is so close to being removed, so I continue with removing it from the instrument panel until I can pull the final module out.
Now on to the doors. Each door has a single wiring harness connector in the door jamb and a couple of screws holding on the hinges. They are pretty straightforward to get out so long as you can open the doors fully. Back for attempt number three at removing the steering wheel, which was finally successful. With it out of the way, I can get down to the brake pedal and accelerator. Both of these will be pulled straight over to the DeLorean. The accelerator is entirely integrated with a spring and sensor and everything. It has a single connector to work. The brake pedal is attached directly to the brake booster through the firewall, and that is going to take some effort to transfer over and get working. The instrument panel frame can now be pulled out of the car, leaving the climate control system hanging from the firewall. This box has an integrated blower motor, AC evaporator core, heater core, and actuators for handling defrost and directing airflow for heating and cooling. Off comes the brake booster, windshield wiper fluid tank, hood latch, and then back for another attempt at the curtain airbags. I also take off the seat belts while I'm at it. This time I figured out how to remove them and they both come off pretty easily. The rear hatch, or at least the crushed remains of it, held the final wiring harness, which came off with a few bolts. Lastly, the rear wheels were removed so I could remove the calipers, wheel speed sensors, and wheel bearings. I'll be removing the ABS ring from the wheel bearings so I can have anti-lock brakes on the DeLorean. And with that, the interior is completely empty and we have absolutely everything that we need from the donor vehicle to do this EV conversion. In the next few episodes, you'll see me mount the electric motor in the DeLorean, build battery boxes and put the batteries in them, and move all the electronics over to get this electric vehicle conversion complete. If that seems like a fun project, you won't want to miss out on those next episodes. So please show me that you're interested and give me your support by subscribing. This is Project Lightning.